happy Sunday, you lovely, lovely people. Welcome to the Jaden Show. Tis I, Jaden Cornelius. I hope to spend a few minutes with you this Sunday to introduce you to someone very, very lovely. And all the way in Cambodia. Can you believe it? How cool. We are so international on this show, darling. I think we should go and listen to a little bit of this young lady's music. This is Karma. This is Summerly Carson. Yes, I killed him. I killed him for money. And for a woman. I didn't get the money and... I didn't get the woman. Pretty isn't it? Super, super cool song. Let's go and meet the lady behind the music. This week's incredibly special guest, the amazing Somali Carlson. <laughs> Somali Carlson, welcome to the Jaden Show. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> it's a bloody pleasure. Uh, you're all the way in Cambodia. I am, yes, yeah. In what Kampak. are you doing in Cambodia, Mrs? Uh it's a it's a long story, but um I when I finished college, I moved to Korea, South Korea. Mm. Um everybody always asks which one, and I'm like, what do you think? But <laughs> so South Korea. 
And I was teaching English there and I, I was only supposed to go for one year, but I ended up staying for over 10 years. Wow. I got married um, to a Canadian and then he brought me to Cambodia because he wanted to do a restaurant here. And then like everything kind of snowballed from there. So wow. I've been here for six years now, I guess. So. And you love it? Yeah, I love it. Yeah. I absolutely love it. <laughs> oh, well, that's amazing. So how have you have you found it difficult to swap countries with your music to keep music going? Uh I uh well that's the funny thing. I quit music for <laughs> I quit music for like over 10 years. Wow. Um when I moved to Korea, uh I again long story short, I was uh, I actually grew up singing since I was 3. I used to travel with my family like Von Trapp family style. Um, we did like I they would stand me on a tabletop and Shirley Temple dresses, all that stuff. Wow. And um, but it was for church, it was Christian. Yeah. And I was very sincere about it. And I like put my whole self into it. The whole dream was music the whole time. I went to Christian um, music college. I majored in contemporary Christian music. <laughs> like wow. it's on my diploma. <laughs> but um then like uh, I just something it's changed and I just couldn't be a part of it anymore. And I thought I had to separate myself from that. So I quit everything and I left. That's kind of part of why I moved to South Korea, but then I just quit everything. And then I was lucky enough that when we moved to Cambodia, I got pulled back in. <laughs> wow. That's so. amazing. So, yeah. <clears throat> so did you only, I mean, I was born again, Christian for many years in my youth. So I could only listen to yeah. <coughs> Christian music, basically. Yeah. Of which there are amazing music. The Winans, Amy Grant, I mean. 100%, yeah. Still yeah. listen oh, to them uh, now. Uh, Rick Franklin, do you know? No. Uh, oh, DZ you... Talk. <laughs> oh, no, I was into like Michael J. Smith and Amy Grant and all these. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I know all those names. <laughs> and, and still am, still am to this day. Still yeah. sing Amy Grant in my shows and. I still see yeah. Winans actually in my show as well. So. Oh yeah, they're fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, but um, <laughs> obviously my path has changed quite a bit since then as well. But um, yeah. But were you able to? Did you have any outside influence? Were you listening to secular music back in the day, or was it just Christian? No, that's the thing. Same as you. Like I wasn't really. Um, I mean, I did because my mom was part of a band with her brothers growing up. It was very seventies because, um, of course, that was their era. But um, I grew up with them playing seventies music. So I did know, you know, some of that, but I wasn't allowed to live. Like when I went to college, I didn't know who this is going to sound terrible. I didn't, I never listened to Michael Jackson or any of that stuff. Oh, me too. So, yeah. I, yeah I, so I, I remember I, one day I sneaked and I was sneaking um, a quick list. I was such a big fan. I loved Janet Jackson before I came Christian. So I was okay. listening to Michael and Janet, but I was listening to Janet Jackson one day doing the washing up secretly. And I heard a noise. I freaked because I was listening to bloody Janet Jackson drop oh. drop the washing up bowl on my hand as I was holding the glass and cut my thumb right down to the bloody tendons. Oh so I'm no! Like, I'm not allowed. This is punishment for listening to secular music. Oh, oh I was gosh! Like, oh, my yeah, God. No, I I broke my um I broke my uh, Frank Sinatra records because we had like a burning party, like one of those things. <laughs> Like that's part of why again, like again, no, no offense to anybody who. No, 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 absolutely. Else fine, is... But like for me, it was just not for me anymore. But yeah, I broke my like Frank Sinatra. Like what? <laughs> just so silly. So yeah. Well, I'm pleased you've come back to your music now. So who 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 are the people you you listen to now? Who are your influences now? Oh, everybody. Um, that's the that was the best part about kind of when I went to Korea. Um, that was kind of the catalyst, but. I met people that loved music and we were always together talking about it. And I was learning so much about so many things I never listened to before, but I love everything from Led Zeppelin to Leonard Cohen to uh, Lana, Del Lana Del Rey to Lizzo to like, you name it. I, I love it all. Like, I really love music. <laughs> and and K-pop. Yeah. I love K-pop. Yeah. I mean, yeah, um, not all of it. There's one, a couple songs that um, I, have on my playlist but yeah i do yeah sure i mean there's a place for everything right so yeah, absolutely yeah i do find myself listening sometimes to a bit of black pink and stuff like that is like yeah i think that's, that's who i have on my team. i'm like oh my god you're such a teenage girl Jaden. i'm like yeah I'm <laughs> <laughs> so, so what are you doing? well we, we, we've just listened to your song karma like what kind of path are you choosing to take if you had to put yourself on a musical direction now 
how would you specify your music? Um, I don't have, like, that's the thing. I, I think what I'm going after is the songwriting. That's the thing I always wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Um, so with this project, it's kind of like a dream come true because, um, I'm partnered with people who have strengths that I don't have. And so it's perfect because they give me, um, like uh, Kid Genius does the beat or the foundation. Then I use my skill, which is to hear something. Like I hear something on top of that. I write the melody, I write the lyrics. And then um, JP is an incredible musician. He tours with Michael Bolton. He plays saxophone key. He plays everything. He's incredible. And then he adds his flair. And then we all just combine that together. And um, the best part is it's not just one sound. Like we're, uh, We're doing a bunch of things because... I've learned that like not staying in my lane is better for me. If you, I don't think I have a lane. <laughs> I mean, I do. I could very well do country or blues and really stick to that. But I really like going through many lanes. Being your moving through it and being your authentic self through it all, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like yeah. I'm not forced lanes, but just if I can go there, why wouldn't I? Right? Why not? Absolutely. Yeah, if it leads that way. No, absolutely. It's been a, a quite a current theme in a lot of the shows, actually, that I think since COVID, we realised the fragility of this industry. And, you know, like, if you're going for a major record deal and stuff like that, they're like, no, this is your lane. Don't you dare introduce a saxophone or a guitar, or I mean, or a triangle or a kazoo or anything that is a part of what you are doing. And don't change that flavour. And don't change your outfits and don't change your hair. And it's all very much like that. You know, you have to be completely on that path. Well, that was my experience of the music industry when I was signed to a, oh, okay. a label. And I think it is with a lot of people uh, until COVID. And then it's like, A, we can do it ourselves now. And yeah. B, I will always be Jaden, whether I'm singing Pavarotti or Celine Dion. Like, yeah. Yeah, or, yeah. or, you know, the theme tune from Titanic. I just sound like me, no matter how yeah, I do yeah. it. And I definitely look and act like me when I'm doing it. So, you know, like... I just finished recording a pop disco track. I did a reggaeton track with an amazing artist from Mexico about two years ago on my YouTube. But then I've got um, Mexican classical music. Like um, I've got a Spanish opera, like pop pop, opera. So like, I just like, I love things that make me go, oh man, that was cool. I love that. So Mm -hmm. for me, I'm a pop star, opera star, classical crossover star, do a bit of reggae, do a bit of reggaeton, don't mind doing a bit of heart, Alanis. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, very good. Yeah. (laughs) So cool. And uh, do do you, are you doing shows at the moment? Yeah. Um, I, well, that's kind of what got me into it. I got to Korea. I mean, I'm not correct. Cambodia. And, um, I met right away some people that were doing like this. Um, they had this thing called Rhymes on the River. And so this group would play on the boat, but they would have people come and guest sing. And we went on it. And somebody who was part of that group asked me if I sang. And I was like, well, yeah, I actually do. And they're like, do you want to get on the stage? And I was like, oh, OK, sure. Why not? So I did. Yeah. And then one of the guys who played guitar, Andy, um, who's one of my like I, he's one of my closest musician friends now. Like I you know how you meet a there's nothing like a music, a music family. And there's nothing like the bond when you meet a musician yeah. that you just, you know, there's nothing like that. And he's one of those people. And, um, he was like, come, you know, sing with me. And we did. And we had so much fun. We had a great time. And then that kind of, when he left, I, um, I started leading up a whole band, which I also, you know, <laughs> didn't know I could do. And right. that was great. And then when they left, it was just me and Max and we're still doing it. And, then I was like, uh, I got invited to do um, kind of what I'm doing now with somebody called Rob here, who is a, uh, his name is DJ Mute Speaker, and he's fantastic. And he had me write to his beats. And that unfortunately only lasted for like a year. But that really got me um, hungry for more. <laughs> and I was like, this is what I want to do. So I found a different way. And now I'm doing it again. And yeah, so. amazing mate amazing so what are your plans okay what are you doing at the moment so what's happening in your musical journey right now like what's going on for you at the moment we just started releasing at the end of january so it's only been like five months uh the whole album is supposed to be 10 now it will be maybe 11 so we'll see but um the whole plan is release remix repeat so every time we do an original song um kid genius and jp both remix it and so we do the release Two weeks after is the remix and another remix. And then we have another original. 
And the whole plan is to do that, like finish that out. And then um, he already has, Kajinius is already saying he wants to do another and I'm, I'm game. Um, and I'm collabing with a few other people too, which is great because through this, I've met other musicians and that's the best, like I told you, all I want to do really is um, I want to sing first and foremost, but I really want to write. I really want to yeah, do yeah. that. So getting to do that is like, I feel like somebody, I feel like I, I'm very happy. I'm very grateful. <laughs> oh, no, that's amazing. And it is something that's part of you, whether you like it or not. You know, part of what? It's part of you, whether you like it or not. You can try and run, sister, but you can't hide. Yeah, 100%. You know, I, I was I, miserable for so long, and now I know why. <laughs> yeah, no, same for me. I, I had that stage where, you know, like, was getting really successful. It all ended. And, of course, when you lose that opportunity, it's traumatic, especially if it's not yeah. your fault. And, um, yeah. you know, so you just run and hide from the whole music. I'm never doing it again. I'm never listening to any music or watching pop shows yeah. or anything. And then you're just yeah. like, shit, like, I don't know who I am without it. And I don't even, like, I love it. It's almost like a really, it's almost like a marriage. Like, you know, there's okay. going wrong sometimes, you know, because you think, I just really don't want this, but I can't live <laughs> without it. <laughs> like, 100%. You know, it's, yeah. do, you, do you prefer being in the studio or do you prefer the right, I mean, writing and being in the studio or the gigs and the being out in front of people? I like both. Um, that thing you just said, I kind of said a little while ago, um, whenever I sing Love on the Brain, do you know the song by Rihanna? I always think of that as music. Like I'm singing to the audience going, all you have to do <laughs> is love me. Like, and like singing it with those, like, I don't know why I, why I keep coming back to you. This is horrible, but also yeah. I love it. Like that's what that song to me means yeah. is music beats you up and spits you out. But then sometimes it's so good. Sometimes it's, you know, so it's just up and down. Yeah. But um, I like both. I think you need to do both. I think that uh, live shows teach you how to be a better performer, a better singer, a better musician. Oh, like completely. live shows really teach you. And then also the, of course, I love the recording part and the studio part. I think it's all kind of a package, you know. But do you have a favorite? I mean, in an ideal world, would you be just in the studio writing, releasing, remixing and repeating? <laughs> Or would you be, get me out there, get me on that stage? Am I able to, well, I want to, I want to write them and then perform. <laughs> Sweet. No, that's so, cool. yeah, so both. Yeah, no, yeah, that's I amazing. Just, yeah. See, for me, I never liked the whole performance thing. Yeah. I've done probably over 5,000 shows in my life, probably even more now. And it's like, mm -hmm. I never look forward to the shows. Getting yeah. in the studio, putting the vocal down and some harmonies and then listening to the whole creation and then doing the photos yeah. and the videos and I can be a princess for 10 minutes on stage. Oh, you're a good like, dancer. Wow. No, I'm really not. Oh my No, I goodness. saw. You were very good. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I'm just doing it out of, it's pure adrenaline and fear. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, it's better than me and my, I'm not, I'm not. So I was very, I was like, wow, he's really good at this. Oh, geez, mate. No, no, no. But so for me, I really don't like, I remember I was in Thailand, actually. I was singing out in Bangkok for a month um, back in the day, back in the 90s. And some record companies came out and went, oh, my God, like, Jaden is really quiet and doesn't really say anything. But the minute a camera comes out, he's like Madonna. Like, what? How do... I don't fear cameras because they, for me, they don't judge. They just capture what is. But, you know, but people judge. And that's what I, I, I love being in a studio. I love making music. I like doing the whole magical creation of videos and stuff like that but put me on a stage i'd rather be watching netflix okay that i do relate to um i do love the being on the stage but i will people here can tell you before a show i'm like the worst person to talk oh, to yeah, yeah, don't, yeah. Come to me. <laughs> yeah. don't come near me because i'm just like Rah! like someone shoves something up my so i won't say that because yeah. i'm like nah and then on the stage, I'm still sometimes I have to not let I have to knock it in my head. You know that, but yeah, once something hits, it's like the best feeling in the world. Oh, no. And then you're like, oh my god, I can't wait to do it again. Oh my god, that was amazing. Yeah, right. <laughs> when it's good. Yeah. When it's for good. Week. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I get that, but um, I do really like. There's nothing like that. Um, mo and this only happens doesn't happen every time, but that moment when you can it just feels them. like surreal like you you sing something you never did before your one of your bandmates does something they never did before or you have a reaction from the audience you've never had before where they just yeah. really get you yeah. in that moment yeah yeah I, th I think that's the hardest thing I, th I think as artists you know sometimes we're amazing 
we're our yeah. amazing selves. I'm not saying we're better than anyone else, but we're our amazing selves. Yeah. And then sometimes we're background music. And I think Definitely. that is the hardest thing for an artist yeah. to, you know, like to be a CD playing in the background yeah. where everyone is talking louder than you and then you raise your music because you can't hear your tracks or whatever and then they're talking yeah, yeah. And just like it is it really is like an abusive relationship to be fair you know you yeah. just and ignore me you're yeah. always ignoring me but then you tell me you love me and you gave me a tip and asked me when my album's out but you didn't listen to me once I know but that's well, and that's the thing. Like um, Max, like Max is my guitarist, and low season writers here. And just uh, I think a few shows ago, uh, he turned to me. He's like, "Well, at least we're practicing." Yeah, I, that's, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, I see it now. Now I'm a little bit older and wise. I'm like, I'm doing this rehearsal, mate. This is I'm getting all the songs I've not sung for like three or four months. I'm do, putting them all together in one show now. Practice. Like. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, ready for the big one. Yeah, exactly. Sweet, and the thing is, like, what you said, if I, there's shows where I literally was like, I'm never doing this again. Like, this was the worst. You're right. Nobody listened. Why am I even doing this? Yeah. But then at the same time, I remember not doing it and it was horrible. And it felt like someone ran my pet over every time I saw anybody doing it. And it wasn't oh, because did. I was Absolutely. envious of them. I was envious, but not because I didn't want them to be doing it. It was because you missed that part of you. Yeah, yeah, like it was awful. So yeah. I will never ever want to go back to that. No, I hear you. I hear you. I'm 50 years old and still making pop videos. So you good, know, good for still, you. Like, yeah, like, and there's, yeah. yeah. Until I can't actually do it. Yeah, I've I've given in trying to. I think I've given in. The thing that's made it a lot easier for me is now I have no expectations. I do it because I really love it. And I really love doing what I, and I, and because it's part of me, I don't know who I am without it. And yeah. so without expectations, there's no disappointments because every day is a journey. Every day is a trip, right? I'm just like, yeah. oh my God, like a new radio station is playing or someone wants me to do a collaboration. And I'm like, this is what it's about. It's not, it's not about being successful in the stereotypical terms of a mansion and a pool. It's about mm -hmm. feeding my desire and my my passion now and being with my authentic self within that. And I think that is more rewarding. The journey is the destination for me. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and just fight. I mean, that's the whole point. I will never... Uh, it's not about succeeding. It's about trying until... Like, you can't try anymore, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. No, I think you've got it spot on. I loved Karma. We said we just heard it before the interview. You have a beautiful voice and I love what Thank you're doing. I love your vibe Thank you. and everything you're doing. What are your plans for the future? Um, keep doing this. Um, I am like, I do agree with the no expectations, but I'm also still going to hustle. I'm going to hustle as hard no, as possible. No, of course. You've got to work it, sister. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I do like, I'm just going to keep um, every day I try to do as much as I possibly can. Um, we're going to finish this album. I'm collabing with some other people. I'm going to plan to do more after that. As long as I have the chance, I'm going to take it. Yes. Um, just right, right, right. I'm trying to do every avenue. So like I, I love researching. So I research as much as I can. So I'm like contesting, licensing, everything. Like I'm going to go for everything. And the worst that can happen is they say no. And then, you know, as the older we get, the more we're like, no, it doesn't phase me that much. Yeah. No, <laughs> <I'm> like, yeah. <laughs> like, okay. All right, next person. Yeah. Or you're like, hold on, that no was not um, strong enough. I'm going to try again. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I might be coming to you for some lessons and tips, darling. To be fair. <laughs> oh yeah, come on, come at me. That's yeah. the thing. That's the one thing I love to do is look up stuff. So <laughs> yeah, I might be. I might be saying, Summer, can you advise me on this? I don't know what to do. <laughs> Please do. That's the other thing I love about what I'm learning here is I'm meeting so many awesome people like you. Sure. And other artists who are fighting for this because this is what they love to do. And um, the of course, there's always a sense of competition with anything in our world, right? Yeah. But then there's people who genuinely, genuinely want to like, aren't gatekeepers about it. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. I don't know for me, but I'm going to give you all of the keys I find because you know what? You succeeding and me succeeding is not going to hurt each other. It's going to help well, each other. Yeah, I, that's that's the thing that really baffles me, and it has, and it it kind of upsets my little sensitive part of Jaden. It's the fact that we are yeah. a community, and I can't I can't compete against you because I'm not Summer Lee Carlson. Yeah, we're different. Like, like how and, that... you know, and if there was a guy, I can't be. You know, I'm not Justin Timberlake or George Michael. I'm just Jaden, and I'm doing Jaden yeah. the best of my ability, but. If I can do something to help someone, like the reason why I started this show was because I thought no one bloody helped me when I was younger. 
Yeah. No, yeah. So no one would have given me five minutes to talk about my music or, you know, to profile my stuff, even if it's only just four people. One of those four people might be a show exec. We don't know, you know. Yeah, 100%. So like, why are we not supporting each other? And, you know, oh, I've got this video or I know this promoter or, you know, this person would collab with you. Amazing. Because we're a community and we're doing it on our own now. And, you know, yeah. almost like against the machine, right? You know, the machine. 100%, yeah. So, exactly. you know, we need to be rising this up because one day AI is going to be taking over all this shit. So we need to be making yeah. it. 100%, AI right? Right. <laughs> You know, Ugh. even more well, now, yeah. I think. So, no, I get that. Absolutely. Why not? I agree with you. Why not impart the things that I've learned in my 32 years of singing and any yeah. context that I've made that I think can help someone out? Absolutely. I'm sharing that shit. You know, well, I mean, like, this has been my whole life experience, even in college, because I still keep in touch with some of those guys who are now doing amazing things. Sweet. Um, so the best musicians I know, and this is almost always 100% are the ones who are so good at what they do. They have succeeded and somehow they still, they still find time to mentor or to bring you in or to make space for other musicians. And that includes like JP is one of those people. He doesn't need to be doing this. Like he's got, yeah. he's got way more, you know, plenty going on. He's incredible. He's doing that. Like Andy did that for me. So many people here have done that. Um, I'm trying now to do that for other people. Like when I meet people that have just started music, like, because that's what people did for, like, we have to, we better pay that forward. <laughs> like, that's Absolutely. what we should be doing. Absolutely. It's really quite interesting, you know, like you see in social media, because that's another job in itself. They're trying to promote your music is like, bro, oh, man, this is int more yeah. interesting than any other part of the industry. Yes. But the people, you know, the fact that, you know, it's like to click a like, a subscribe, or a bell is the most difficult thing for people to do in existence. I know. <laughs> like, it is really well, if I share the funny cat video, you'll be all over that shit. Mm -hmm. But you can't just go mm, subscribe. Because people put their cool points, which is it's so silly. Crazy. I'll never be cool and I'm okay with it. I but follow they put everyone. Their cool points on, on what they, what I promote. That's my cool points. You yeah. know, and I'm just really like, I remember like being on Twitter and I was like, oh my God, I'm blue tick now, which means like, I'm like a recognized official, like, you know, I'm a Jaden now. Yeah. <laughs> and I was looking at other blue ticks and like, and I'm following them and no one followed me. I'm like, surely social media is about being social. Yeah. So not about being elitist and like, I'm sorry, darling, I can't put, I'm far too, you know, like, why would you yeah. not want to follow some? I mean, obviously, if they're sharing stuff about, I don't know, like animal cruelty or something sexual. Yeah, sure. I don't need to follow that shit. You know, I just, there's enough troubles in life. To, I need to keep my computer screen as lovely as possible, to be fair. Yeah, 100%. You know, yeah. but I'm like, but why would I not for a Beryl who's into, you know, soap operas and Tammy Wynette? Like, Beryl yeah, sure. It was really super cool. Actually, I'm, and that's the thing, before doing this, I was, I was guilty of, not because I didn't want to support people, but I was very like, not on social media there's a reason why there's not so many pictures or videos i'm not very good at that stuff but um it was just kind of like now i understand why it's so vital i'm just like man just click like you said just click it it's like takes two yeah. seconds now i do as much as i can like i said i'm trying to be as supportive as i can because like you said i'm realizing how incredibly valuable that is and it seems like such a small thing but you know, like ripple effects, it's really not. <laughs> my mother, I mean, I really don't like when my mother's right because it really pisses me off, to be fair, because she knows she's always bloody right. But she did say something to me many years ago. She goes, the people you meet on your way up are the people you're going to desperately need on your way down. Are the people you what? Would desperately need on your way down. Oh, 100%. Oh, you know, that's wow. That's really. Be lovely to everybody. Be a community. Be human. Be a family, you know everyone's got each other's back and i think that's amazing yeah that's really wow that's like i'm gonna have to digest that one for a bit because yeah that kind of, yeah that kind of you know it's been i think just through life experiences and through continuing to do what i love and what i'm passionate about that's kind of really how it rolls actually you know yeah. and i've met i've met people i've met some of the loveliest celebrities on the planet that were just divinely beautiful and so wonderful like so i'm like yeah. I, spent, I met olivia newton john a few times and she was like a bloody goddess like she was just so nice and normal and silly and you know charming and i've met other celebrities that 
wouldn't even pee on you if you was on fire. Yeah. And it's like, rah. You know. I know. Right? Very strange. Even I mean that happens even with people that are on the same. This is like I'm not. I'm nobody. Oh, but no, I know what it is who are also, and I'm like, and they act like, and I'm just like, what? Yeah. Like yeah. it kind of is mind boggling to me. <laughs> so I love your vibe. I love what you're doing. I love everything about thank Summerlin you. Carlson. I'm a fan now. And I'm oh, very excited. Very, very no, I am. And I'm very excited about, you know, you keeping to your authentic self, doing the things you love with super talented and lovely people and just yeah. spreading that joy and that love and that energy that's within music because it's incredibly healing. It's incredibly powerful. You know, so I love what you're doing, sister, and I really wish you, you the ultimate success. So, future, what's going on? What are the, what are, the, I mean, no expectations, but what are these expects? What are these plans and goals and dreams that you're working towards? Okay. What I'd really like is, um, well, I'm going to finish this album. I'd really like to get some of them sync placed if possible because sync licensing, um, because I, you know, that's, I'm, every time I write the songs, I think of many movies, anyways, in my head. So I'd really love something like that. Uh, if I did get the chance to do more, like tour or do something, then I mean, yes, 100%. Knock on wood, I'm not going to jinx it, but like, yeah. of course I would do anything. But um, the plan is to just keep finding a way. That's the plan. I mean, I want so, so much more. I do want more. Um, and so I'll keep trying for more. <laughs> yeah. No, absolutely. I think that craving is really, really healthy, especially when it's something that, you know, edifies you in this part of you. That's amazing, mate. <laughs> right. Where can people find you? Because now you've made millions of fans, all my 23 fans and two whippets and oh. a poly and now all over this. So where <laughs> can they find you on social media? Um, okay, so where are all my things? Uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, uh, Twitter. I think you're everywhere apart from Snapchat, right? Yeah, that's, yeah, basically it. Am I supposed to get on Snapchat? Is that important? I don't know. I can't get my, I joined it about, what, about six, six or seven years ago. Couldn't get my head around it. It was way too. I think TikTok is still um, trying, but, you know. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm not. And I'm kind of really hoping I don't have to go topless to start doing dance routines. I mean, if oh, I no, have to that's do it not point and I'm doing it on my 70th birthday, if that's, you know, that's what I'm saving. <laughs> and you know, Actually, then I'm going to go fucking viral then. I'm going to be this fat, balding old English boy with tattoos going, in a minute, get a minute, then a minute, well, and oh, the <laughs> on my 70th birthday. That's what I'm going to do. That's what actually that would there you go. That's a that's your um backup plan. <laughs> that's my that's my plan M. <laughs> I have two cats, so I'll use the cats if that you know. Sweet. So are, are you, I, I saw a cat a bit earlier. I think I just saw the end yeah. of a cat now. Yeah, so, two of them just went by. <laughs> have you had them for long? Um yeah, actually, well, uh Cambodia, there's like stray cats everywhere. Yeah, so they yeah, I, it's kind of just like a running joke, but we to me cats are family though so we have like a rule now that we've got these two no more because i want to be able to if i have to leave i, I have to take them with me and there's no like you can yeah. fry them from my you know yeah. so um yeah i've had tater for like the last year yeah. uh, pecan showed up at the worst possible time in the middle of doing all this where i had no extra budget to pay for a cat that had wounds all over her body like her tail had been run over but she came in we took one look at her and she's the sweetest cat. Like she's so snuggly and such a joy. And actually she's kind of saved me during this because like you said, it's not always rainbows and bunnies. It's really hard. Yeah. So when I need snuggles, I, that's my oh, go-to. Bless you, man. I have a little animal sanctuary here. So oh. I've, got, I've got 11 dogs and 10 cats, six chickens, a turkey and a tortoise called Trevor. Oh my gosh. That's, yeah. that's actually kind of like a dream. Well, it's, wow. it's bloody, I mean, you know, it's bloody hard work and bloody expensive because, you know, you take them on, they, they are your family. So all the meds, all the foods, all the everything. But at the same time, exactly what you said, you know, they're all street animals. They're all being rescued and they have saved my ass more than I have ever saved them. Ever, ever, ever. Oh. Like, they really have Aww. come at the most perfect time. So, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Yeah. You've got to come visit Mexico at some point. Yeah, and then come to Cambodia too. Um, but you do you know what? Yet. In all honesty, it's my dream. When I, you know, when I eventually, when my boat comes in and I start making a little bit of an income regularly, then yeah. my dream is to do well. Vietnam, Cambodia, 
and I, I loved India and I really want to go back and spend Good. some time in India as well. Well, so, hit me up uh, for Cambodia because I can mate, up with... We are in touch. Things. You've got a Jane in your life now, unfortunately. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, we're definitely in touch. And yeah, absolutely. And you've always got friends in Mexico. Oh, so yeah, Aww. that'll be perfect. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on my show. Thank you so much for having me. Like, I feel really, really, really grateful and really blessed. And I, I, I yeah, I'm a big fan of you now, too. And wow, oh, you've got you. a really good heart. So, amazing. You, <laughs> well, we're definitely in touch. And maybe in the next 10 years, there might be a, a Summer and Jaden collaboration as well. There we go. Yes, perfect. Except um, I'll just stand while you do the dancing. <laughs> we end. Let's, let's, let's do like a night, darling. I'm getting a little bit old for any of that sh shabazz now, to be fair. I oh, just... stop it. No, 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 no. Let's no. do <laughs> let's do a nice funky ballad. Perfect. Sounds good to me. But on All that. Right. <laughs> I'll do it here. You can do it there. We'll do exchange little video bits and then we'll, you know. I'm actually doing a um a project. I'm starting it. I'm still waiting for someone to help me to show me where I put my mic into my studio because I'm really not technical on any level. <laughs> but it's called It's Do O'Clock. And I'm doing duets with people all over the world remotely for my YouTube. So I would be honoured awesome. if you would be part of that with me. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I'll be hundred percent. I would love that. Too. So we'll get on with that in the, you know, in the towards the end of this year, we'll we'll plan something in that. Very cool. Amazing. So Molly Carlson, you are not only a star, you're a bloody wonderful human being, and I'm so grateful that you spent time with me on my show. Thank I wish you. you love and luck and success in all that you do. People at home, look at this lady. You need to be following her. So go and find it on her Facebook, on her Twitter, on her LinkedIn, on her TikTok, on her everywhere. I mean, YouTube, <laughs> wherever you can find it. And if you can't That's find right. it, then Google that woman. She also <laughs> has music on Spotify, Amazon, and Apple as well. So you need to be downloading those tracks. And I'm, we're not going to leave this show without another track from you. So we're going to we're gonna wind up this interview but because I just want to hear more of your music. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate that. <laughs> no, thank you so much, darling. Let's touch base again. Let's have you on the show again. And when you've got like new EPs out or whatever, let's do a Jaden show special. And, okay. Huh? And let's talk and let's and let's get another show out. Oh, uh, thank you. That's really kind. And I'm 100% in. <laughs> All right, lovely lady. Have a wonderful, thank best you. time. Have a good night's rest and we'll catch up again soon. Thank you. You too. Take care, All mate. Right. Bye-bye. How super lovely is she? I really do hope you will go and follow her and support her on all of her social media platforms. And please go and check out her music. As we said, it's on Apple, it's on Spotify, it's on Amazon. Go and check out that lady. Go and download her stuff. Go and stream her stuff. Go and show her some support and some love. Summer, thank you so much for being on my show. You crazy, crazy beautiful kids at home. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have another stupendous new week. I'm already excited to see you again this time next Sunday for another wonderful edition of the Jaden show I'm not going to leave you empty-handed oh no I'm going to leave you with another song why because I don't want to run what does he mean I hear you cry that's the name of the song don't want to run this is Summer Lee Carlson this is don't want to run thank you so much for your time today stay beautiful stay safe see you next week on the Jaden show take care bye bye
Got the...